Hey guys, and welcome back to Pokemon X. We are now the champions of Kalos, the overthrowers of Team Flare, and generally loved by all. But our adventures aren't over yet, oh no. Now we have the post-game of X to deal with. You know, certain plot threads to tie up, legendary Pokemon to catch, and Megastones galore to collect, to name but a few of our options. But first I must address the most important, grimmest, darkest news of all. Hoenn is fucking confirmed. Yes! And lo! There came over the mountainsides the dark shadows of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, bringing doom and destruction to the land and to bring more use to your Nintendo 3DS XL system. And yay, did the dollars flow into Nintendo's bank account. <laughs> and lo, it cast a dark magic spell of money and wealth. But to, to answer the question, you'll no doubt all be asking, yes, we will be covering one of these games, we will confirm which when I have the game in my possession. Well, I just hope it's the Emerald one, because that's the one with Rayquaza in it, and I like that more. <laughs> well, we've got a wide variety of stuff to show off in the, the post-game. It's going to take around ten parts or so. First thing... We, uh, we're going to do a little trade with Shauna here. You can trade her whatever you like. You can even go go ahead and trade her Xerneas for shits and giggles if you so fancy. That should be pretty interesting. Just open up the Pokeball. Oh, it's God. Well, okay. <laughs> it's going to take us a while to get back into the swing of recording Pokemon commentary, so I apologize if we're a bit goofy in the first part. Although it would be great if you got a... Uh... You know, a chess spin from Shauna from another game put on the Wonder Trade. You got that, and then you traded it back to her like some sort of recursive chess spin loop. Yeah, I'm still not a big fan of uh, putting the nicknames on the Pokemon. I mean, you know, I understand we're technically adopting them, but, you know, I should be able to change their names to what I want to complement their new family. You know, just like in real life. Um... Pro tip, if you uh, ever decide to adopt a child, you can only change their surname, as far as I'm aware. You can't, you know, after a bad day at work or whatever, maybe you've been laid off, maybe someone's just been addicted to you, you can't change your child's name to say Butt Snake. <laughs> Billy Butt Blaster Heresy, go to your room! <laughs> uh. The team you're seeing here hasn't really changed much from their adventures, uh, the Elite Four, and uh, fighting the champion. Apart from Tzok becoming a bit of a HM slave for uh, the time being, they're pretty much the same guys. Yeah, we've all seen that comic where a Hawlucha knows how to fly. Oh yes, uh, so I would uh, recommend uh, getting some uh, protective equipment. Um, I don't know, maybe a rocket or something? Insurance, that might help. They have free healthcare in France, right? Let's hope so. It's not that way over here in the U.S. <laughs> oh, Lumio C. I've missed you, baby. Now, uh, if I recall correctly, we are in Lumio City to go talk to Professor Sycamore. And I assume he's got something cool to give us, because otherwise he could have just emailed us if he just wanted to chat. You know what I'm saying? He thinks the parade was enough. No, it's, it's never enough. I am the champion of Kalos, and I demand more, more, more! Well, uh, becoming the champion actually, as it should, ups your uh, style factor. Uh, I I believe it actually gives you more discounts in certain places. Well, that'd be pretty good. You know, you just walk in, hey, champion of Kalos, here's my card. Oh, it checks out and everything. I believe it also opens up a couple of places like the Bal Institute and Cafe Loire, but I can't be asked for those, so uh, maybe another time. God. No, it's me, Margaret. <laughs> I don't get this. Like, they just came in to give you this uh, upgrade to your Pokédex, something that the Professor uh, forgot to give you. I'd also like to point out that the Professor is ten meters away in the same room! Uh, hello? I could perform that procedure. Shut up, Sycamore! Nobody cares! <laughs> I guess they just want to get a lot of mileage out of their models, because, you know, these characters were so useful throughout the game. I think it was implied that uh, their costume forms kind of did important stuff off-screen, but uh, if it ain't on-screen, I don't give a shit. That's true, I agree. I mean, you can't just say they did cool stuff off-screen. You have to show it. Show, not tell. 
So basically, he's giving you a pass to Kilude City. The uh, city you can't really get to until you beat the game. I can just imagine there's like a guy standing in front of the monorail. Oh, oh, wait a minute! No, you haven't completed the game. Please turn around, sir. This is post-game only territory, young man. I don't know why he gave us this pass. We could have just bought it ourselves. We are the richest guys in the entire game at this point. Hell, I could use my O power and get a discount. And hey, if you already knew where the Pokemon Center in Kilude City was anyway, you could have just had Ha Lucha fly over to it. You know, go through the roof and all that. Shades of gold, silver, and crystal here. What was the monorail going back and forth between Johto and Kanto? That was my favorite post-game, I think. What about you, Mo? Oh, yeah. I definitely agree. That was pretty much, I think to this date, there hasn't been a post-game in any game whatsoever that has beaten the gold and silver post-game. It was just like, holy shit, man. Didn't lose any of its call cool factor when uh, they uh, redid it for a hot gold and soul silver. If anything, it got better. I really should have picked up those games uh, when they were new. I mean, I don't play a lot of these uh, traditional Pokemon uh, turn-based games anymore. But still, I think I probably would have carried through due to just the pure nostalgia factor of it. That was us. We saved that plan. Yes, the uh, monorail is in fact powered by electricity. And by the way, ca uh, cars need gas to go vroom. <laughs> and planes, they run on dreams. So don't stop dreaming or I'll fucking kill you. It runs on my own sense of self-worth. <laughs> Remember to believe in magic or I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually pretty neat. I'm glad they added this, because as you know, uh, Tom obviously is recording this off of his capture card that he got installed into his 3DS, but that's expensive, so it's neat to have an alternate option, finally, to uh, record your battles within the game itself, you know, and share them with your friends. Technically, you could still do your own Let's Plays of Pokemon X, Y, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire using the Versus Recorder. You just have to use the 3DS's uh, snapshot uh, function to uh, fill in the gaps. Oh god, don't do that. The only way that works is if you do that on the Let's Play archive, and something awful kind of has the monopoly on that particular uh, style of Let's Play market. Uh, Kilud C has got a, a few cool landmarks. Uh, in this part, we're basically going to be bopping around and checking out one of them. Uh, I, I would have included two in the same part, but when it came to record it, the second one turned out to be very, very long and time-consuming. Yeah, you uh, you recorded these uh, out of order, didn't you? You know, because you only had the one safe file to work with. So you basically got what you could, and then you arranged it in post to create a more natural progression. Uh, I think uh, part 44 and 43 were recorded out of order, so a little bit of behind-the-scenes stuff here, though. Now this guy here, uh, he has an interesting purpose. He actually judges the individual values that your Pokémon has that you've been uh, training up. And he kind of gives you some vague hints as to, you know, how many value points it has, like its strongest attribute, things like that. My only problem with it is that he doesn't really give you any concrete numbers to work with. And for the people uh, who this guy would be really useful for, the guy who really wants to breed, like, the best Pokemon possible, I think having more concrete numbers available would have been more helpful. But that's just me. You know, give me a special screen on the touch screen. And while we're at it, can you put the Pokédex on the touch screen as well? Because searching for roaming Pokemon is a fucking bitch. And while we're at it, can I have some cake while I play? I think that would be really nice. <laughs> Yeah, just tap the touch screen to eat those uh, pokey puffs. They should have like their own dedicated cake button. I'd be all over that personally. Cake, cake, yes. Excuse me, I am the champion. I believe I should be able to uh, purchase these items for the low, low price of free. I don't know why you're buying. You only bought like one pokeball. What's that about? <laughs> that's the emergency pokeball. Yeah, that's the one that's gonna turn the tables in case everything goes out of whack. Uh, this is basically the south of France, sun, sea, and sand. Lots of bip and lots of pip. Hello, uh, I am the champion of Kalos. I'd like to inquire if any of you have any free shit. <laughs> I will, uh, take the soda in your fridge. I'm honestly not picky. Oh, oh, it's Dr. Pepper. Not sure about that. I guess I'll take it anyway. That's a weird name for a professor. 
<laughs> That's in one of the lesser known Pokemon games. Oh, jeez, you've got a gun! Oh. <laughs> well, that kind of de-escalated very fast. You know, it's kind of strange that they, they haven't taken, like, Pokemon moves and found a way to turn them into guns. Because that would be so convenient, don't you think? Okay, that would completely kill the whole idea behind the games, but come on, I want a flash cannon cannon. Hand cannon. This is the battle, Mazon. We'll be getting to this in uh, part 42. This one is particularly interesting because you can actually play through it, you know, like a little bit, and then you can save your progress between fights, which is great for guys like me who can't commit to a video game for about, oh, more than 15 minutes. Yes, those casual players. Hey, hey now. I play my video games very seriously. I just do them in really, really tiny bits. Ah, uh, excuse me, what's with your hair? <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you here. I got no answer to that lady's question. Moving on to a Team Flare member. What are you doing here? <laughs> Is she letting you live with her? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty pathetic, dude. I agree. It was really dickish, actually. But no, it'd be dull if everyone else was the same, you know? It wouldn't be dull because there'd be about, oh, ten, a hundred of you left. Well, all I know is that Lysander got his, and uh, it proved his philosophy is bunk. So, moving on. Oh, the friends of our... This is actually a really interesting feature, I think, because what's so great about this is that... You can use it to make friend safaris for people who aren't even playing the game. I thought that was pretty neat. Mm hmm Shall I uh, read off my little uh, bit of information regarding the friend safari? Go right ahead, my good man. Okay, the friend safari works differently to the safari zones of previous gen. Sorry, I am reading off a notepad document here. Instead of exploring a wide open area, uh, searching for gold teeth and the like, this time it's a bunch of small safaris or patches of grass. <laughs> I don't know why I put that in quotation marks. <laughs> that, that are dependent on your 3DS friends list. Each person on your list is assigned a Pokemon type, and two Pokemon from that particular type can be found within that safari. If your friend beats the Pokemon League, it will unlock a third Pokemon for that particular safari. Most of the Pokemon found within are rare, have a higher chance of being a shiny Pokemon, and having a hidden ability, and I believe they've got two perfect IVs, but don't quote me on that. And the best part is your friend doesn't even need a copy of the game to be assigned a friend safari. Special thanks to Riddick and Neo for the fact-checking. Yeah, I think that's a really cool use for your friends list. It really encourages you to friend as many people as possible on your 3DS and get all these different safaris. My only problem is that they're actually patches of fucking grass and not anything interesting like the past safari zones. But the fact you can find all these interesting and rare Pokemon do make up for it. Yeah, I got my hands on a Greninja shortly after he was announced for Smash. He's gonna be... I'm actually really looking forward to trying him out in Smash 4. He looks pretty fucking fun, actually. Do you know who this is? This is a Grumpig. No, nah, I was actually talking about the Greninja. This is the evolved form of the Pokemon who won as our second badge. Oh, is that right? Yeah, this is uh, the, the Frogadier all grown up. Yeah, he was pretty useful during that short time we were using him. I'm glad to see him back on the team. Yeah, that Pokeball really turned the tides. I'm, I'm glad you brought it along. Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, my friend Safari type is Ice, and my Pokemon are Sneasel, Cloyster, and Snova. Snova? I'm trying to remember which one that was. I think that's the pre-evolved form of a bomber snow. Oh, oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess they can't all be good. You know, obvious pun aside, uh, ice type, pretty cool. Ugh. Ugh, Tom. Ugh. Uh, it could have been worse. I could have used a Game Grumps pun for uh, Grumpig, though. Ugh, Tom. Just stop sighing, alright? These parts are hard enough to get through. <laughs> So, uh, how many friend safaris do you cover in this part? Uh, two more. Alright, let's see who's next. That's free overall for those of you who have trouble kind. Wait a minute, wait, is that one for me? That's you, THD. Oh, very interesting. I wonder what type I've got. 
Well, it was electric, mate, if you bothered to read the fucking screen. That sounds like work. Fuck that noise. Oh no, I dropped it! <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call it, I hope you realise. Well, that's good, you gotta go through with that joke. I was wondering where I dropped that, though. I noticed you got all these uh, various different types of Pokeballs. I'm glad you're just going right away with the Quick Ball. I, I don't think... You should just buy, like, 500 of those and just kind of just do that from now on. That would be so much easier, wouldn't it? I'm not entirely sure where you buy Quick Balls from. Let me just look this up while you waffle on. I guess if you bought, like, 500 Quick Balls and just caught everybody with them, that would be sort of cheating and take all the fun out of it. I am Mutual God of the World. Do, do, do. <laughs> And he's sitting there going, well, fuck, this isn't cool. Dropped. <laughs> That's what I did to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh! I understood that reference. <laughs> there you go, yes. Now you've made it topical, I like it. Uh, I'm looking for all this shit and I can't find the answer. Just do our work for us, please. Come on, I don't want to do it. Right, one more, and uh, we shall draw this part to a close. Now, who will this friend's safari be? Ah, oh, we're going with Spar. How come he has ghosts and I have electric? What's up with that? I don't know. It's just look at the draw, mate. I didn't ask for ice, but I got it. I'm pretty sure uh, they're either randomly generated or maybe they use some sort of code that's dependent on the uh, friend itself. You know, maybe their friend code. Ooh. This is the pre-evolved form of uh, the spooky tree Pokemon that we caught. Yeah, this is like the dead kid one, am I right? Uh, yeah, just to give a bit of uh, clarification, I believe it's the Y Pokedex. Says, uh, this Pokemon is uh, the soul of a child that died in the forest. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good way to brighten your day. You know, I just really like that. I'm just glad that's in our children's game. Thank you very much, Nintendo. Masuda, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you, do you just spend all day creating these really sorrowful scenarios? Well, it's, it's Japan, they kind of sleep at their desk a lot of the time. Honest to God, they do that, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was the result of that. Let's see. Just don't name anything demeaning. Well, too late, I guess. Spooky Root. Okay, that's a good new name for its hellish afterlife, thanks. I am the damned. Bye. <laughs> Into the box I go. It's just like a coffin. What are you doing? <laughs> you, you don't have to literally walk about to trigger a Pokemon <laughs> battle, you know. It's like you had ants in your pants or Durants in your pants. Now, Shubbin evolves into Banette, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. I actually saw, like, Banette is a, a, a ghost-type Pokemon that apparently is basically like a possessed doll. And I actually saw a comic where there was a Phantom and a Banette, like, in the same area. Like, the Banette was actually this Phantom's former doll that it had, had lost. And it was, like, all very touching and shit, you know, I'm sure you agree. Yeah, but I, I wasn't affected by it because I'm tough and gruff and I do commentaries for the internet. Grr, I'm, like, bending a metal steel girder right now, Er. You know what it feels like when that man takes his hand out? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Owl Dragon. Uh, so what are you gonna name this? Owen? <laughs> yes? This was recorded so long before <laughs> it was actually confirmed. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good timing, I think. That actually matches up beautifully. And that, my friends, is the Friend Safari. Personally, I would have preferred if we had the regular Safari system plus this, but as it stands, so long as you have friends, you're good to go. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you all next time, where we continue the post-game of Pokemon X. See you then.